quota, it's great for an SMB person to be able to reach their quota. Again, the goals are, are not as long term uh, as they are with enterprise. Uh, RMR, REL calls it MRR. RMR is reoccurring monthly revenue. So the, the sale value for one month, 60% of the sale value of one month. So if the person sold, for example, if they're in that middle group and they did sell $5,000 that month, they're going to get $2,500. Right? Everything stays in the same currency is dollars that they're going to get. Uh, and then basically at the point that accounting uh, does the salaries, they look and see what is the dollar shekel value and they multiply it out and everything is very clear. I think also just a quick point again about the Anglos, make sure that your staff understands exactly what that solution must score it says. You're not hiding anything, so don't leave them you know, a situation that you didn't know that they were suspicious. Uh, that would be the worst. What, what's another tool that you can use? Something in addition, which makes things a lot of fun. This is called an accelerator. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm doing two things. One, I'm trying to increase my bookings, my cash in that I'm getting. Okay, so instead of somebody saying, I'm going to sell a package for 250 per month, I can say to that person, okay, and 250 per month, you can sell that package for $3,000 per year, right? 2988 per year. Okay, and what I'm doing with that is one, as a salesperson, I'm insuring my commission because there's no cancellation. But two, as a company, I'm bringing more cash in. So what, what we have set up here is we have set up a system that says that when you reach certain thresholds, again, I'm based on a $60,000 quota, right? $5,000 a month, $50,000 a year. When you reach 50% of that quota, we're going to add one, 5% onto your commission every month. It doesn't matter where you are in the three, you might have a month that you made no quota. You took vacation, you made no quota. We're going to add on 5% onto your commission every month. Okay? What this does again is it pushes people to do cash in. And also, if you think about the longevity and the burnout rate of a salesperson, you're actually able to extract a little bit more time. Because if somebody's around this threshold right here and they're thinking about leaving the company if they're burned out, they're thinking, well, geez, you know, I can add in a little bit more sale. I can add in some great additional salary, a uh, commission to my salary. And the company is gaining in from the bookings. So this is a, a great model. I think it also makes things a lot of fun when you're talking to a salesperson. It brings up a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. It brings up a little bit more of what you can talk about instead of just basing on what you sold every month. You can talk about where they are in the big picture. Um, uh, the other thing that I wrote down here is uh, also important always for a salesperson. You know, as much as they're money, 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 I think a salesperson really appreciates all the time recognition, a bonus, uh, whether that bonus be a dinner out somewhere. It might be, uh, you know, buying them a book that you want them to read, movie tickets. Uh, maybe it might be a financial bonus for money, but making that public recognition within the team, sending out an email. You know, I want to congratulate Hilton on a great month of sales. He closed this account, this account, and this account. For total, great job. You're helping build the company. That's something that I feel pretty certain that most salespeople are going to put that in their saved item. You know, most Anglos are probably going to send that to their parents when they get that email. It's, uh, it's an important factor. I mean, I hope that everyone here remembers it uh, anyway. Uh, okay, let's just go over some of these. These are some additional points here uh, that, I put, uh, that I put down that you should definitely remember. First of all, I mentioned before that I do things very old school. I don't cut corners. I don't look for tools that are going to make it an easy process for me uh, by maybe taking out a little bit of information, but it automatically populates automatic emails, templated emails that are going out. If I'm writing an email to a customer, I write an email to a customer, okay? And I become fast at that, but using these canned emails, people read through it. Uh, as far as uh, a phone, you definitely want to set up a phone system that has a U.S. number, okay? Obviously, if you're dealing with international sales, you want a U.S. number. Also, you might want to set up a U.K. number if you're going to reach Europe. Uh, and also set up a VPN. You need an answering service that's going to be able to take that inbound lead, uh, that inbound phone call, and send it off to the right extension, a VPN. Set up uh, a voicemail. Also something that we do is we take the voicemail and it comes to us by email. It records it and then I get an email on my mobile or I sit down on my computer and I can hear it and get back to the person. Uh, the issue with Fridays, and I'll jump down here to SLA, okay, service level, internal service level, how I'm going to respond to a customer. In sales, I'm talking about 
Friday is a work day, okay? And it's important for me as a manager to know who's going to be working Friday night and who's not. Don't forget that for us, 4 o'clock is 9 o'clock EST. So if we move that into a Friday situation, we really need to know, is there going to be follow-up? Sometimes what I might do is try to gear my Friday leads, my PST leads, towards somebody that I know is going to be able to work that time. Or if I have a foreign, somebody working in the States, I'll definitely push those leads over to them. Uh, the response time has to be very clear from you as a manager as far as to your agents. In other words, I need to have response time really within 24 hours for somebody. We're working in Israel. It's already a major problem that you're working from Israel. You're going to be losing sales because you're built in Israel. But you want to minimize that process as much as possible. You know, what does that mean? That means that your team knows exactly that they must respond in a timely manner to inbound emails that are coming in and phone calls. Uh, at the same time, very important, again, what your SMB team is going to get is they're going to get enterprise leads, right? You're going to have a strong enterprise person that's a little bit savvy that says, I'm not going to come to your site and ask for information about your quarter of a million dollar package. I'll hear about your expensive SMB package and then I'll take it from there. Your team needs to recognize that and pass it over to the enterprise agents ASAP so that they can follow up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think I got down there yet, did I? I'm down here. We didn't get down there yet. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Wait, I'll get that. Let me, let me get to the WebEx. I'll get, I mean, I'll just work on my way down. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Uh, real quick, what I always do with my team is we do this thing called the 3-2 punch. Okay? I never close a lead without a 3-2 punch. That's three emails and two phone call attempts. Again, most of the leads that you're going to get are not going to turn into sales. A lot of leads that you get are not even going to answer the phone. It's going to be a wrong number. They're not going to respond to your emails. I never want to see a lead within my CRM system that didn't have a 3-2 punch. And again, it has to be recorded. I need to be able to open up the CRM for that lead and see, June 15th, voicemail. June 17th, call. You're going to have your own follow-up as far as schedule, how often to follow up, how often to make a call. But don't assume that if you call somebody on the first time and they don't answer, you send an email went to their spam that you can close, uh, close the, uh, the lead. Chat. I think chat is an excellent tool. Uh, I come from the world of chat. I very much believe in it. Chat has a major problem. Okay, one of the major problems is that chat needs to be manned 24 hours a day. Uh, I've also outsourced chat. The results were not great. Okay, as far as that, the outsourcing people don't really work to close the sale uh, that much. So again, I think that chat is an excellent tool if you have the staff to handle it. If you don't have the staff to handle it, just make sure that chat button goes offline for the hours that you're not there. But just think about PST is the furthest away from us. Okay, so PST starts at 7 o'clock at night. In other words, if your team is leaving at 10 o'clock at night, that means that you're offering PST clients three hours of service. I would not offer chat for that period of time because that means people are logging in and they're just seeing you're offline all the time. Okay. Uh, Skype. Real quick to the Israelis, Skype is not a generally accepted mode of professional communication in America. Okay, it's a great tool. Uh, Europeans use Skype all the time. They'll send out their name. They'll say, contact me through Skype. A lot of times you'll see a consultant will do Skype. But as far as a sale, pick up the phone and call. Show that you're trying to be an American company. A lot of times people don't even ask, are you guys an Israeli company? They don't even ask because they think that the follow-up process was so smooth and was so clear that they assume that you're local. They assume that you're, you're American or you're, uh, you're UK-based. So. I don't see that Skype is, is an effective tool as far as doing business uh, overall. And then WebEx and GoToMeeting, these two products I believe greatly in. I think there's no way to do inside sales and start to charge a customer anywhere from $2,500 you know, uh, a year up to you know, $30,000 a year. I don't think there's a way to do that without doing a GoToMeeting. I'm proud of my product. I want the customer to see that I'm proud of the product. I want the customer to probe area of the product and understand what they do and what kind of effects they can get from them. So I definitely recommend go to meeting. Also, there's a conference line on there uh, that helps out. Did that, did that answer your question? OK. Now hit me with the question. Yeah, if I can pick up the phone with somebody, you know, and, and I can say to them, you know what, I'll say to them, you know, Bob, do you have five minutes? Let me show you real quick what it is. I know that in the back of my mind, I'm probably going to have to do another session. 
more in-depth session. Hopefully, they'll invite, you know, their head of IT or you know whatever, their VP, whatever. But think about the difference with that. You know, you, you don't have the human contact with these people, so you need to do everything that you can to do that. Also, with chat, when I take chats, the first thing I want to do is get that person from the chat to the phone. In other words, chat is a great lead source for for me. Okay, it's a great lead source, but I want to pick up the phone and try to make that connection. And if I can get them in a WebEx, yeah, that's great. I think people walk away from that experience and they say, wow, you know, you guys were assertive. You're on the spot. Uh, okay. I don't. I'm, no, I don't show my face. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I don't show my face, but I, you know, I do the, it's great, I mean, the GoToMeeting, it loads up, you know, basically within two minutes on the side of the customer, you can set it up, uh, you know, really, really quick, uh, and there's a lot of different tools out there to do the same thing, I think, you know, it's not bad to be competitive, right? Yeah, 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 you can do that with GoToMeeting, but for our product, we don't need it, uh, but you can also pass over control. Uh, okay, so just uh, in conclusion, before I just uh, let you know, a couple things to look out for within the sales team uh, is burnout. Obviously, you see that somebody's becoming apathetic about their work, uh, if they're showing up late, uh, if their results are coming out slow, uh, you definitely want to start to stop and talk to them. The last two points are very important. Uh, you know, obviously, anytime there's bad blood on any team, okay, I, I think not just with sales, uh, that's a bad thing the team that can affect other areas of the team and it's okay to cut somebody you know there again it's difficult to hire here uh, good salespeople are hard to find but obviously if you have somebody that's affecting your team in a bad way that's affecting you you know just go ahead and cut uh, that's an important thing uh, and Ariel talked a little bit about the reporting that when we look at reporting we look at two different levels of reporting I have the reporting that I do with the team okay and this is unofficial reporting Okay, it talks about what they've sold, the products, the average order value. You know, but as far as REL, what he needs as far as the board, they're not interested, you know, so much in that. They want to know how much was sold, what the forecast is. We talk about attrition and cancellations, how we're fighting that and how we're dealing with renewal. It's a, a different reporting. That's uh sale. But it, and again, your your team should be able to like come in and pump that stuff out. I mean, they should be able to come in and pump out, you know, 100, 120 emails a day. Boom, boom, boom. Just bang them out. <laughs>